A few weeks ago, we buried hydrogen hype. But wait, there's a new miracle fuel on the rise, ammonia. This isn't an entirely new idea, and I was thinking if it hasn't been going anywhere so far, it probably never will. But when I looked into this, I learned a few new things that made me think it's more promising than I thought. Let's have a look. First things first, what's ammonia? Ammonia has the chemical formula NH3, and the good thing about it is that there's no carbon atom in it. This means if you burn ammonia, it produces no carbon dioxide. This is the first good news. The second good news is that it actually does burn, and that does release energy in that process, so you can use it as fuel. Ammonia is a gas at room temperature, but it becomes liquid at much lower pressure than hydrogen gas, which makes it considerably easier to store and handle. It also isn't as explosive. Last but not least, it has a higher energy density per volume, meaning that you can pack the same energy into a smaller space. Space. That was the good news, now the bad news. Mm. Ammonia is toxic, is highly corrosive, generally nasty to handle, and it stinks. When I say it stinks, I don't just mean it's unpleasant. Ammonia was once used to revive unconscious people. That's because it smells so badly, it basically brings the dead back to life. If you wonder how it smells, ammonia is the characteristic stink of urine. It's also really good fertilizer, by the way, so your garden was just doing his job. Another problem is that while one can use it for combustion engines, the energy required to spark the combustion is much higher than for gasoline. It also burns slower and the combination with oxygen can produce nitrous oxides, which are a health hazard. This means that while one can use combustion engines for ammonia, these need to be suitably adapted. But once you manage to do this, you can run combustion engines carbon dioxide free. This isn't just theoretically possible, it's been done. Already in 2023, Toyota unveiled the world's first ammonia-powered engine for passenger cars. It's a two-liter four-cylinder engine, so pretty small, but it works. There are also various companies that develop ammonia engines for heavy load vehicles and ships. Indeed, the Australian company Fortescue has a prototype for a ship engine that can switch between diesel and ammonia. It's been in operation since last year and just completed a journey from Singapore to the UK. The American company Acer Power is working on conversion kits to replace diesel with ammonia in existing engines. They're initially targeting trucks and tractors, but also electric generators, and who knows if it goes well, maybe passenger vehicles. But here is a new thing which I only just learned about which is that there's a company that's working on generating electricity from ammonia to run electric cars with it. They do it by first generating hydrogen from the ammonium. So basically the car's hydrogen powered, but they avoid the problems with transporting and storing hydrogen by using ammonia instead. The startup is called MLG, is based in Brooklyn and is backed, among others, by Amazon and the oil company Zodi Aramco. Why would an oil company back an ammonia-powered vehicle? It's because at the moment, most ammonia is produced from hydrogen. And most of the hydrogen is produced from methane, aka natural gas. And that process, you saw it coming, does release carbon dioxide. This is why the fossil fuel industry wouldn't mind switching to either hydrogen or ammonia. It's possible to generate ammonia from electrolysis by first getting the hydrogen from water. Then it'd be truly carbon neutral. Or one could use carbon capture and storage. Another way would be to just use naturally occurring hydrogen. There have been repeated rumors that this might be a much more common occurrence in Earth's crust than we thought. I have to admit that I like the idea of using ammonia to power cars. As I said previously, for the time being, the problem with electric vehicles is that the electric grid extension is lagging behind. This is why we're seeing an uptick in hybrid vehicles instead. Replacing gasoline with hydrogen isn't going anywhere because it's just too difficult to handle. So maybe ammonia is the solution. But wait, there's a big problem here. It's that using ammonia is even more inefficient than using hydrogen directly. 
because not only do you need the electricity to generate hydrogen, you then also have to produce the ammonia from that and then convert the ammonia back to hydrogen and that into electricity. Each time I think about this, I arrive at the conclusion that fossil fuels are really damned useful. Maybe that's why we haven't stopped using them. Has someone thought of this? I'm not the trusting kind. I don't like it if companies keep track of my whereabouts and God knows what else. That's why I use NordVPN. NordVPN is an app that makes your internet connection ultra secure. You install it on your phone or laptop and use it to create a safe connection. With NordVPN, no one can spy on your data or track your whereabouts. And it also comes with a threat protection that keeps you safe from malware, trackers and malicious ads. It doesn't just protect your privacy, it also makes your life easier. You know how some content is blocked for users in certain locations? For example, for example, if you're in Europe, a lot of pages in the United States have become inaccessible in recent years. That can get really annoying. But well, NordVPN has more than 5,000 servers all over the world. Just pick a server in the United States. Problem solved. You can make use of our special offer if you use the link nordvpn.com/sabine or the coupon code Sabine. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.